Welcome to Meta Analysis for Hedgehogs. So I have finally moved to a different apartment as you can probably see um, because the background is quite different. And um, I was at the Virus Bulletin 2017, which was really, really great. So everyone who is considering going there, I, I think you should go. It's awesome to meet um, meet the people online. I'm thankful for everyone I met there. So it was really great. Um, today's video is about um, a frequently asked question, which I got in the last weeks. And that was how do you get samples and how uh, how do I get samples and how can you get uh, samples that you can analyze and train with. So uh, first things first, I work at an antivirus company so I have access to for instance virus total and that means I get most samples very easily. Um, before I um, started working there, um, I was a student in computer science and I was already uh, doing my master thesis in malware analysis. So I had to find other ways to get samples and that's probably something I can share that may also help you. Um, first off, if you have an old email account, just look into the spam email you get there and into the email attachments. That's one way to get fresh samples. Um, furthermore, I suggest um, forums that deal with memory analysis like kernelmode.info. Um, there are sections where you can ask for malware samples if you provide the hashes. Um, so some people might post the samples that belong to them. Um, secondly, that's how I started out. Someone told me you can simply search for ridiculous tools on the internet to find some malware. And yeah, actually that works pretty well. So if you search for something that's too good to be true, it's probably malware. Uh, for instance, uh, PayPal hack tool. So, oh yeah, at Free Money Daily updated October 2017 with proof. Um, that's most likely malware what we get here. And this provides a Mediafire download link, which will be downloading the file for you. So, okay. And it provides a password. Those are usually password protected archives. Um, otherwise, those um, file sharing sites will at some point realize that there's malware in it and they will disable the download. So that's why those are usually password protected. And um, let's take a look at this and open it up with 7-zip. So password Moneycrack July 2017. Um, if we upload the file, let's take a look at that. Now, with these tools, you oftentimes you get a Trojan that will just steal your credentials. So in a lot of cases, they will ask you for your PayPal um, credentials and then they simply steal it. So. Um, oftentimes it's really a password stealer that you have there. It could also be something else. It could also be a remote access trojan um, or a keylogger. In that case, we have like Bitdefender says it's a password stealer, uh, GData says it's a keylogger, spy, agent spy. So it's not really conclusive. Um, some keyhole thinks it's a Trojan dropper, so that's something you will have to check for, which it actually is. Um, yeah, have fun doing so. <laughs> we will move on to to other stuff. Um, yeah, one of my favorite uh, sites is um, hybridanalysis.com or reverse.it. That's the same site, and if you 
create register there that you have a free account there you can download samples that have been uploaded to this site so i think you know this site if you follow my videos um there's a tab for submissions and there you get the latest submissions for any files that have been uploaded and the interesting part for me at least is uh first the the thread score that's the score that um payload security provides for this file based on the behavior uh, when it was executed dynamically and based on the features on on static analysis so they will say okay this is most likely a malicious file and then they also say how many scanners detected on virus total in that case it's 22 percent uh, or in that case it's only three percent so you might find files with a high threat score and the low antivirus um, coverage which are probably very fresh samples in that case so that's the interesting part about that and you can also search for tags like in this case tags evasive uh, malware whatever whatever you're looking for and that's how you find interesting samples now one of those i found today is this one and um, it's a as you can see oops, something went wrong okay it looks like this is it is a microsoft word document that um uses powershell to do something whatever that is and uh, the good part of that is you can already just get this powershell command no need to analyze the document so um if you have a, an account you can download the sample here if it was shared also if you are in this overview take look out for this symbol for this icon because that means the sample was not shared. So no need to click it if you have no um, access to the files in other ways. Um, Bitcoin header, okay. Um, and one thing that seems to be happening a lot, uh, these files that you download from hybrid analysis, they are in an archive. So .gz, that's an archive. So you have to unpack them with 7-zip before you can start analyzing them and i think that's all you need to know for now yeah that worked that's the that's the actual word document right here powershell powershell so and just for the fun of it we will continue and take a look at this powershell script here it's also what we saw in hybrid analysis. We could have copied it from there. Um, wait, did I get this right? Looks right. We turn on word wrap so you can see it. Now that's um, encoded PowerShell command and it's usually base64. So we can simply decode this. And uh, now you have Unicode and um, what I usually do with that is I simply re replace this stuff here um, with nothing so I turn it into ASCII basically and we get this we set the language to PowerShell all right and if you look into this now oh uh, that's also an interesting part that will probably tell you that this is malware that should really be assigned to you um, you see there are several upper lowercase variants of this split for instance uh, of string and join this upper lower casing is weird and the reason is that a lot of times the pattern signatures by antivirus scanners are case sensitive so if you change the casing in uh, case insensitive language like this like powershell it will just um evade this pattern signature um 
Yeah, and that's why they do it. Uh, so what you can see is there's a string with some numbers in it and in, in between there are uh, uh, known digit characters. And these known digit characters are basically removed with the split command. Like the split will split the string into uh, an array using this as delimiter and then the delimiter is gone and then they will join the array again. So all this does is it filters out the non-digit characters and we can simply we can deobfuscate this pretty simple. Let's open up Python. We need to import the regex module and um, we will simply do the same, like the, um, let's say we, we have this string. Okay, and then we split the string and put the result into result. String, no, we split it using a regex which is all non-digit characters and the input is our string and now we have as you can see we have the array with those integers that have to be turned into characters first doing that we can say for every um, every x in result we will say uh, x this should print yes this should this prints every single character yeah and we put just everything in a string in a result string so I say um, I initialize this and I say this that. and we have the deobfuscated script right here can I mark this? mark I can mark this. I want to copy it. And there we have this. And uh, now we get the result of that. Okay. That's the result. That's um, PowerShell. Or is it W script? I'm not so sure. Anyways, we have now some URLs that are used to download something. So, and uh, download files from. So, that's a PowerShell downloader macro in there. Um, yeah, that just as a side uh, note. And um, that's it for today. So, I hope this is helpful for you to find some new and fresh samples. Um, you can also ask people or analysts on Twitter. So, they are usually very um nice and will share files if you get if you provide some hashes for them um not all of them are able to do that because sometimes you are not allowed to share anything but uh, in a lot of cases they will probably share the files if you ask um yeah that's it for today thanks for watching and see you next time